action. But Imam al Junaid, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, defines it quite simply. At-tasawwafu khuluq. Faman zada alayka fi tasawwafi zada alayka fi khuluqi aydan. Tasawwaf is good character. So whoever improves your character has improved your Sufism. That's what an indigenous definition is. Not an orientalist definition, not a modern polemical definition, or not the Iranian definition which really problematizes and sometimes persecutes tasawwuf, but uh, the indigenous definition is simply transcending yourself and applying that inner dimension of the sunnah. So Islam is to be a total package, not just for what you do with your body, which is the fiqh, or what you do with your mind, which is the aqidah, but something deeper still, your, your consciousness, your internal subjectivity, your ruh, your nafs, all of that needs to be purified. Anybody who doesn't think that they need sorting out in their internal lives uh, really doesn't have too much self-reflection. That is a necessary discipline. And when the ulama say, فَوَاجِبُونْ تَقْلِيدُ حَبْرٍ مِنْهُمْ They mean it in a shara'i sense as well. Because if you look at the books of Asul al-Fiqh, the books which explain in extraordinary detail sometimes the rules whereby the Sunni legitimately deduces the rulings of the Sharia from the Quran and the Sunnah. And it's really complicated because the text sometimes is really complicated and Arabic is really difficult and you have to use all kinds of rigorous methods of deduction rather than just saying what you think it means. That the first thing you have to get a handle on is your own self-awareness. Because ultimately these things are about theory choice. And theory choice is determined by the human subjectivity which is often subject to emotion. And this is fatal. The Holy Prophet says, A judge should not give a verdict when he is angry. We can see why, but that, that is the case. And it's also the case for fatwa. Nobody, however many qualifications he may have, is allowed to give a fatwa if they're in a kind of state of emotional turbulence. And this, it seems to me, is part of the, the tragedy of the ummah nowadays, which is that instead of setting aside the lower tendencies of envy and fear and anxiety and rivalry and the stuff that every one of us, including myself, have within ourselves to identify it through muhasaba and self-knowledge and putting it in its box and stamping on it and keeping it out of the way of dealing with the Qur'an and the Sunnah, instead we open the sort of box, the Pandora's box of all of those afarit, all of those demons, and they're the ones that sway us when we reach for particular fatwas and options. That's a catastrophe, and that's really the end of the Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah. And that's the tragedy of the Ummah today. People saying, I know that the consensus of the Ummah is X, but I'm really angry, and therefore I'm going to follow Y because I've seen this clip on YouTube where somebody seems to be saying that you can interpret it that way. That's the end of the Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah because that's breaking all of the rules. And the reason for that is lam yatasawwaf, that individual has not worn the prophetic robe, the robe of not really being interested in dunya and being in complete control of emotion, not in some kind of stoic philosophical way abolishing emotion because that would be inhuman but instead to have it all in due balance and the ego to be disengaged. All of the problems of today's ummah, it seems to me, are the result of ego, nafs, shaitan, hawa. And when that gets into the driving seat in religion and its institutions, then you have a kind of inversion. Instead of religion becoming the symbol of everything that brings hope to humanity and a symbol of that which is a thousand times better than the sort of mega consumer turmoil that the world is now trapped in, Instead of it being a symbol of beauty and openness and, and, and something ideal, it becomes simply a mirror to the envy and the anger and the viciousness of the souls of the people who now think that they're in charge of the texts. So if that's the alternative to yatasawwaf, then it is haram. The alternative to purifying the self is to have an impure self and you can't disengage the self from the process of delivering fatwa and choosing your fatwas. And therefore, religion becomes just a mirror of the ugliness of your own inner life, of your own frustrations and disappointments, perhaps even your mental illness. 
you find interpretations that gratify that deep inner imbalance, and the result is, is a catastrophe in religion becoming the inversion of what it should be. Instead of showing to people through the sunnah, and Islam is the sunnah, the beauty of the heart of the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the joy with which people entered Islam, instead you show them the raging volcano of your own anxieties and fears and disquiet and envy and uh, viciousness. If you're showing them that and you're, you say, that is Islam, then that is the ultimate blasphemy against the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because you're saying, my ugliness is the sunnah and you're attributing the turbulences and the darkness of your own ego or sub-ego to the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's the worst thing anybody can ever do. To attribute ugliness to the one who is the purest is about the worst decision that anybody can take and this is the way the shaitan and the nafs and the hawa operate. They want to take the best things, those things that give most light and hope and serenity to humanity and the human heart and to turn them into things that are scary and ugly that drive the world away. So instead of da'wah, invitation, you have tanfir, repulsion, which is inevitably what happens when people are not able to yatasawaf, to control themselves, to understand themselves, to overcome the lower impulses. So in that sense, we would say that classical Islam, as enshrined in the, the doctrine of Imam Laqani, is correct, is actually correct. Whether or not you define Sufism as a particular type of tasawwuf or not is not really the point. Tasawwuf, as understood by the ulama, all of those commentators on Bukhari means the process of self-transformation, the process of dhikr, the process of remembering Allah, the process of fikr, the process of reaching out and seeing the humanity and the vulnerability and the needs of others and not really paying too much attention to your own insecurities because inwardly, when we really think about ourselves, we see there's not an awful lot there that's really beautiful and interesting. So forget that. Look at the other. Look at the ghayr. Uh, uh, without that possibility, without that tasawwafa, Islam is simply a megaphone for our own shaitan, for our own hawa. And therefore, not to engage in tasawwuf, uh, it is clear. And this really should be a matter of consensus for, for, for Muslims, if we're using this indigenous vocabulary, uh, that, that, that tasawwafa is actually an obligation if the alternative is tanfir and the uglification of Allah's religion and the taking of decisions and fatwa choices that are subversive and close the doors of Allah's mercy to human beings who have never needed their creator more than they do in this age of confusion and, and precariousness. That's a monstrous sin. So we would probably say, we don't need this thing, Sufism, but we would probably say, using the indigenous vocabulary, we have to have this thing, tasawwuf. And that's why the ulama consistently, really without exception, down the centuries of our civilization have agreed that we do need this thing called tasawwuf. And even, some people will say, but Imam Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says the Sufis do this and that. Read him for yourself. Don't listen to what the brothers in the masjid are telling you. Read him. I guess his commentary on the Futuh al-Ghayb of Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. He loves Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. Case closed. Who is a Sufi if not Abdul Qadir al-Jilani? Yes, of course, he has issues with certain aspects of the Wahdat al-Wujud school. That's fine. He has issues with them. They're well expressed. But it's not against Tasawwuf. Ibn Taymiyyah is not against Tasawwuf. Who is? This is one of the remarkable points of unanimity and consistency in our civilization. Despite the many voices and the plurality which we've always said has con constituted its most authentic theme, still, the ulama have agreed, the Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'a, that this Tasawwuf really is necessary in order to operationalize your Islam. Even if you don't use that word for whatever reason, even if you just say self-knowledge and dhikr and riyadha and muhasaba and sabr and shukr and husn al-khulq, use that vocabulary instead, that's fine. But the term the ulama have usually preferred to define the science of those inward processes of transformation is tasawwafa. So we would conclude that Islam can do without Sufism, but Sunni Islam is constituted by having tasawwuf at its heart, and without it, it will have no heart.